Yeah, I'm going to ask, we have a question from the audience, uh, from our yeah. participants, which is, uh, are you, are there any industries, construction industry, of course, but any industry types that you're mo more concerned about and uh, that will have to go more stringent, more intense underwriting? Anybody in particular? Uh, I, you know, other, there's always the ones that, that Sureties focus a little bit more on or have a little bit more concerned on whether it's roofers or drywall contractors or whatever, but is there anybody else right now that you're paying close attention to? Mike, uh, Adam, if you don't mind, my quick answer would be uh, we don't, we aren't paying more attention to particular sectors any more or less than we did prior to this. And I mean, I mean, it's, it's a given, I hope I don't offend anyone by saying this. It's a given that, uh, curtain wall business is challenging. Right. That was the case before the pandemic. That's the case after the pandemic. Doesn't mean there is there aren't good curtain wallers out there. That's not my point. But that hasn't changed uh, because of the pandemic. Adam touched earlier on um, you know some challenges potentially with private owners. We may that may have added to our thought process. It, it, it all other factors held constant. Uh, perhaps. The relative increase in risk um, has has changed more with private owners and public owners right now, and and probably only marginally. But other than that, I don't I don't think we have a different attitude towards risk. It all comes down to um, solid resources, an ability to execute, uh, good character, and a good plan. And if we tick those boxes, we'll speed ahead. Adam. Yeah, no, no particular industries or areas of focus for us. Um, in most most construction firms tend to work in, you know, across a broad swath of different things. But you know, we mentioned it. Uh, things like hospitality. Uh, you know, if you, if you're completely focused in that space, uh, you know, there could be tough times, or likely will be tough times ahead. But but no, there's not a, a particular focus on any one trade or, or industry type. Okay, uh, it's the answer I pretty much expected. You're always uh, looking at things and hopefully if you're doing- Actually, I we're trying to be controversial here. <laughs> right, if you, I assume, you know, the answer is if you're doing it, the, it is, it's the right way is the right way, whether it's good times or bad times, right? I mean, it's real, what it really comes down to. If you're doing your job properly, it shouldn't really change even if the economy um, takes a turn. Um, what? It, so I have a client who I was talking to uh, who asked me a, a specific question. I'm going to ask each of you, which is that um, their their focus tends to be on larger projects, um, but they're concerned that larger projects might start to, and as we've sort of touched on, may may not happen or, or may slow down the availability of them, and want to start maybe looking at doing more smaller projects. What advice would you have to a contractor who's looking to potentially make a shift like that because of their perception of the construction market? Hmm. Anybody? Um, I'll, I'll go first, I'll answer fairly quickly. I think as with anything, if you're talking about a change in strategy or appetite, uh, that, that can just be in theory, there could be more risk, right? When, when you do those changes. Um, anytime there's change, there's the opportunity for something to be missed. And so if, you know, typically it's the other way where you see uh, folks that had done maybe smaller jobs looking to do one very large job, and, and that tends to be a bit riskier. Um, certainly going down in size, I think it's just more resources and do you have enough teams right, to adequately staff a, a, a number of mid-sized jobs. Um, it's, it's a different dynamic. Maybe you spend less time in the bid process, right, on a very, you know, $100 million job gets everybody's attention on the bid, and maybe you get lulled to sleep uh, thinking, well, if I do three or four $20 million ones, eh, we don't need to look at the, the uh, proposals as carefully. So. I mean, that's the only thing that I guess would come to mind um, with those specific facts. But uh, once again, when there's change, there's always the increased possibility for risk. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that, Adam. The other thing I would add is, is periodically, uh, 
you know, folks can underestimate the importance of relationships. And, you know, someone can be really successful in a particular space and they think, well, of course I can move to a smaller space and just do all the, th all the same things. But um, there has to be some sort of competitive advantage. Uh, and, you know, and, and, and if, if the relationships with subs or, uh, uh, you know, local owners is not uh, sound, then sometimes a contractor could be surprised with uh, how difficult the work is they're accustomed to. Yeah. You know, years ago, my father and I uh, wrote an article uh, that appeared in, in a magazine call, and it was the, the title of the article was The Deadly Ds. And so it was uh, uh, a whole bunch of things. I forget how many there were, eight or 10 of them that began, began with the letter D that were um, very, that they could really cause a contractor to have problems. One was death. That's a good one. That, no, that's one that, <laughs> that, yeah, that's a bad one. Yeah. That's a bad one. Right. That's a, <laughs> so it's a good one in terms of uh, causing problems uh, and that it actually does cause significant problems. Divorce. Right. Um, uh, and, and of course, one of them was diversification. And so when you get away from what you know, well, yeah. You can often, uh, whether that's geographic diversity, right? Going out of a geographic territory that you're comfortable in and that you know well, uh, like when a contractor in Philadelphia tries to go to Atlantic City and finds that, you know, it's a, even though it's 40 miles away, it's a much, much different environment to, uh, of course, diversifying the type of work or the size of work. All of those things can have a significant issue, uh, cause, can cause problems and um, require a lot of attention if you're going to, to do those sorts of, sorts of things. Um, so a good segue into what advice do you have to business owners, uh, a contractor, business owners? And um, uh, by the way, my dad just texted me. One of the deadly deeds was also disease. So when somebody gets sick, obviously that's- See, um, he saw it. He predicted this, right? <laughs> exactly right. There you go. I don't think we were thinking about a you know global disease. I think we were thinking more about somebody just getting an illness. But uh, yeah, no question about it. Um, that's an interesting point, right? You know, we don't, I don't know if you've had, hopefully, um, thank, thankfully, we've had very few of our clients who have had COVID or seen COVID on their job sites, I should say. So, um, but obviously that's a concern you, we all have right now for our clients is because it really creates a lot of inefficiency besides the, you know, the, the, how difficult it can be when you have people who are sick, especially if they become really sick, but also the, the very, uh, the, the, the inefficiencies of having jobs shut down for a week or two or whatever it might be while everyone has to get tested and the place has to be sanitized and that sort of thing. So uh, I don't know if you're seeing a lot of that, uh, but what advice do you, uh, why don't we go back to you, Bob? What advice do you have for construction company owners and CFOs uh, during this, to get through this crisis? Yeah, well, I think we've touched on, on some of the things, but, but in simplest terms and whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's our own businesses or contractors, I think, uh, the challenge is to convince ourselves to act now as a put life on hold and wait for normal because uh, we're in the moment now and we need to maximize results and take action in the moment. If that means adjusting overheads, if it means, uh, you know, changing uh, structure or changing, you know, bidding strategy, uh, while still remaining profitable, then, then so be it. Now's the time to act as opposed to, okay, yeah, we'll put it on hold and we'll wait till we get back to normal because we don't know when we get back to normal and we don't know what normal is at this point mm -hmm. in time. Not dramatic, but that's, that's just the reality we have to accept. I agree. Yeah, I agree with Bob. Uh, the one thing I would add is I think in, in times uh, of change, uncertainty, having good advisors around you becomes even more critical. Uh, having you know, professional surety agent like Rosenberg and Parker, having a good construction lawyer, a good CPA, um, and, and others that can advise you, advise you a surety partner, right? That you can reach out to proactively and, and discuss things before they uh, perhaps, uh, what I'll say, read the tea leaves or, or before things go really bad, uh, get get advice and, and get perspectives. I think that's, that's really key to me. Uh, I saw it with the PPP where, you know, we had a lot of clients um, 
asking a lot of questions of their agents and their advisors, mm. and just talking to different CPAs, um, you know, the quality comes out. You, you, you yeah. saw, I saw practitioners that were quite professional and were able to give very clear advice. It, you know, doesn't mean it's always 100% right, but they had well rational, you know, rational views and, and sort of logical views as to what would happen uh, with respect to the PPP funds and others that, you know, couldn't provide any guidance to their clients. And uh, once again, I think it's a time when it, um, you know, when those, having that network of, of good people around you and tapping those people to me is really key. That's a great point. I mean, anybody can take care of your needs when things are good, right? It's the ones, it's when times get a little dicey where right. you need the experts. Absolutely. Well, we are almost up against it. So I'm going to close with our final question, which is, uh, and I'll start, how about I start with you, Adam, which is what keeps you up at night these days? Besides all the COVID news we're reading, what keeps you up at night from a business perspective? Well, besides my soon to be 16 year old daughter and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, 14 year old son, uh, I would say this, uh, you know, certainly it's, it's challenging uh, managing a business. We're in these uncertain times politically with the pandemic, um, you know, making sure um, our folks are engaged, you know, our employees are healthy, one, uh, engaged, uh, adding value, you know, to our business partners, how we can uh, sort of evolve uh, with the times and continue to be relevant is something that's uh, continually on our minds uh, of our executive team. And um, I would say those are, those are areas of focus right now and uh, uh, potentially uh, the things that cause uh, less than ideal uh, sleep patterns. Uh well, I'll say this only half tongue in cheek and say that uh, what keeps me up at night is sleepwalking. <laughs> By sleepwalking, I don't mean uh, you know waking up and walking around the house. It's more a matter of uh, uh, in w whether it's you know an underwriting company or a contractor uh, simply going through the motions and doing all the same things that we did for many years isn't go isn't going to work anymore. The world's changed. Um, with the change, uh, if we can be nimble, if we can be agile, if we can be thoughtful, there are great opportunities. But we have to be mindful of the fact that, every, that a lot of things have changed. So we can't just rely on uh, what worked over the past several years. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I tend to be optimistic, but I, but I think there are some great opportunities that will come from this but we're, we're going to have to be willing to, uh, to make some changes, including but not limited to uh, Zoom calls rather than uh, right. the lunches. But uh, right. It's, right. so appreciate the opportunity, Chad. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks, guys. We're right at 3 o'clock. That was really terrific, very informative. I really appreciate, appreciate your participation. Your, your answers were really thoughtful and insightful. And I know that uh, and I've been getting actually a couple of comments as we've been talking from people uh, thanking us and telling us what a terrific job you all did. So thank you very much. Uh, look for our next uh, shirt track coming up sometime in the not too distant future. We're going to get, uh, I think we're going to, the next one's going to be about international surety. So uh, look for that. You all, all of those uh, on listening will be receiving that information and Otherwise, everybody stay healthy and safe, and thank you very much for participating. Bye-bye.